My boy passion fans, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Hey Adam G. For today's content, guys, ito na ang hinihintay nyo. Let's finally review about the Miss Universe Philippines Finals last weekend. To be honest, guys, I am still reeling from the finale and still stunned at how MUP has really exceeded all our expectations in mounting its grandest edition yet. Yung nararamdaman mo talaga that the organization really pulled out all the stops in making sure that it's worthy of the hype and anticipation the fans, us fans, generated for them after two years of not being able to move around or pigil na pigil sa galawa nila given by our pandemic situation. The camera shots and angling pa lang in introducing Bamboo's performance on stage were very reminiscent of how Miss Universe does it usually with their opening numbers. It just feels so surreal seeing these camera shots and the quality of the production at the start of the show. And you get that feeling that we were really in for a grand show. It really felt like watching a concert level performance and I do get how MUP is going for this direction to hype the crowd given with Bamboo's stature as a performer. And so the girls finally came out in their colorful opening dresses made by Cavaso with their Victoria's Secret inspired wings at the back and grabe kilig na kilig ako as they walk down the stage as they introduce themselves through a voiceover with that camera close up in the end. Grabe guys, parang Victoria's Secret fashion show lang talaga ang peg nila. But if there is something to nitpick lang about this segment is that I wish the dresses were altered to fit the girls better given it's ready to wear or RTW. Having this said, I hope it can find a sponsor next year or in the years to come where it could allow to alter its dresses to make the girls shine even more on stage, similar to how Sherry Hill does it in Miss Universe. Now, let's go to the stage naman. Guys, for me, the stage may be bare, but the huge LED screens reflecting the sparkly graphic designs and the beautiful presences of the former Miss Universe title holders in their stunning gowns truly made the stage look vibrant glossy and elevated it further. Ang gaganda ng mga gowns ng mga hosts nila Pia. Four costume wardrobe changes for Iris and Pia while six wardrobe changes naman for Demi. Now let's get to the top 16 announcement. I think I did a pretty decent job of predicting 12 out of 16 in my list. I didn't get Nueva Vizcaya, Laguna, Aklan, and Ilocos Sur. Although I had Aklan and Ilocos um, Sur in my alternates list. But the biggest surprise of the night, the biggest surprises of the night were Davao del Norte and Pangasina not making it to the first cut. Up until now, I don't know what could have led to their non-inclusion. Could it be their lime green dresses during prelims? Or is it just purely judges' preference? I especially am heartbroken lalo na kay for Pangasinan, whom I was told brought 10 trucks or buses full of her kababayans all the way from Pangasinan to come here to Manila for massive support. So, sayang. Ano kayong nangyari kay Pangasinan? Was she also he heavily penalized for her fashion show um, conduct a few weeks ago? I don't know. Now, let's go to the standouts of the top 16 swimsuit competition and how this segment was done. I honestly feel this segment of the competition was so rushed as you could not really appreciate the catwalk of each girl individually just when Neva Vizcaya, the first girl to come in, is, was about to strike a pose in the middle, the next girl, Kat Legado from Taguig, has already started walking, which you couldn't help but wait for her turn to finally come, taking away some time from Nueva Ecija na gets nyo. So I don't know if it had something to do with the airtime allotted for this segment, but I wish the production crew could have allowed the girls to maximize the whole stage and just let the next girl come in as, the, as soon as the previous girl has started walking towards backstage. Tuloy, we can see any money shots of these girls on social media in the process as you are already distracted by the girl waiting for her turn at the back. Now, as for the swimsuit design used in this round, I thought it was okay. I wasn't really wowed either. I get how they are, how MUP has always been serving us different feels for this segment of the competition year in and out. For this edition, 
I feel it was all about being rugged and hippie with that denim jacket as, a, as its accessory. For me, it was really a cool concept. Um, but part of me wishes that it could have chosen a vibrant color instead as the color used, dark blue, was quite a bit dark for pageantry in my taste. You get that feeling that the swimwear line wasn't customized for the girls compared to how we were all stunned. We were all stunned by Fern Amato's white swimsuit with kimono cape during its main edition and the Red Victoria inspired swimsuit design last year. You really get that feeling that um, the swimsuits that these girls wore last weekend was ready to wear again compared to the swimsuit designs that you have this feeling that Mama Fern Amato and the designer of the red swimsuit uh, design last year specifically tailored made it for the girls. So having this said, the standouts for the swimsuit round for me are number one, Kat Legado. Wow, she was really ferocious when she came out in that high pony on stage and that was totally memorable. The hair flip was quite overdone though, but overall, she really nailed it. Next, we go to Chantal Schmidt. I love her walk here. She really knows how to walk. How I wish though she could have smiled a bit with her turn here to relate more with the audience. Next, we go to Genesis Letugat. One of my favorites here in this segment of the competition. She really channeled her own Andrea Tovar here with her fun and energetic performance. For me, she was just on fire here and I love how she was beaming by smiling more. And now we go to Jiwa Palakat from Ilocos Sur. She's another standout for me. So totoo lang kasi like I was thinking when she was walking, wow, where did this girl come from? This girl is so statuesque. She has st strong stage presence when she came out and she was too fierce. I feel this girl, she's only 21 and 22, can be trained more to look more refined on stage as this woman is really brimming with so much potential. And now we look, and now we go to my next favorite which is Lou Dominic Pixon from Cebu province. Wow, did you see that footwork that she did with her jacket at the start of her catwalk or introduction? She was really killing it with her straight hair styling and luminous smile pa. You can really feel that she was really having fun on stage and this is how you do your swimsuit turn in my opinion. Have fun and smile by connecting more with the audience. I just truly really love Lou Dominic Pixon here in this round. And now let's go to Vanessa Cairo from Iloido province. Wow, what a powerful walk. Vanessa gave here. I really feel Vanessa had her moment here with this powerful walk as it was really strong and commanding. For me, she really brought her A game here. Pinaghanda niya to. Ramdam no ramdam ko yung presence niya rin dito sa swimsuit competition. And now we go to Annabelle McDonald from Misamis Oriental. For me, this girl really knows how to glow on stage. I've never seen Annabelle radiate so much on stage than finals night last weekend. She was just luminous as well with her much improved walk compared to her prelims performance. And now we go to my overall favorite, which is Celeste Cortesi from Pasay City. Wow, Celeste just truly stood out here effortlessly. Her walk, turn, facial expressions in those 20 seconds is are enough to thrill you for a lifetime! She was just so effortless here. She really had the crowd going for her every time on stage to the point that I could no longer hear her background. I could no longer hear the background voice over. She was just truly the runway for me. And she really deserved her Miss Photogenic and Best in Swimsuit Special Awards after that. Now, speaking of Best in Swimsuit, I was so surprised that they announced it right after the swimsuit competition. Ang ganong kabilis. I was like, wow, these judges were so quick in tabulating their scores. Wow. And it dawned on me and my other and my fellow other pageant pressers like Pageantology 101 and the Philippine Pageantry that the special award for prob was probably chosen from the performances of the candidates during prelims night two nights ago which probably could be the reason why because if you notice from last year's edition this special award was also given right after the prelims event held in Clark Airport now we go to the next segment of the competition which is the evening gown. I thought that there were so many beautiful dresses which were showcased here. What I love in this round is that there was a pop of colors that I saw 
with a lot of dresses here for a change only a few girls wore the tried and tested nur nude or sheer gowns which have become a trend in pageantry for the past six years nakita nyo naman there was red yellow gold orange and so many colors it was just so refreshing to see them experimenting and wear solid colors for a change so let me try to talk about some of them here with their performances. Number one, let's start with Kat Legado from Tagig. Yeah, like I said, I was so tired to see those sheer nude gown trend, but Kat really made it work to her advantage as it fit her like a glove. She was just incredibly sexy and luminous here. Her hair and makeup styling here reminded me so much of Valeria Ayos in her Miss Universe Colombia look last year. Katrina was just scintillating and serving me face all throughout her turn here. Ang ganda. Kaya gets ko kung bakit siya nakapasok din sa top 5. And now, next on my list is Chantal Schmidt from Cebu City. You know, I really have to give it up to give it to Chantal. She really takes risks when it comes to her wardrobe choices and this time she did it again. Whereas I truly love her black velvet gown during the prelims, I am feeling a bit mixed with this gown that she wore. Although I love the fabric manipulation employed in this gown, I feel the pearl color for this for this kind of made it look quite not a standout as you can already see the linings and puckering on the side. Now had she worn a different color of this gown, let's say uh, rose gold, it would have probably elevated the look. Now another factor that kind of weighed down the look for me was her hairstyle and makeup. Her makeup was too dark and I wish she could have sported a sleek hairstyle for this kind of outfit. Next on my list is Michelle D's gown. And she's from Makati City. This is the part where I felt Michelle shone the most. The mo the moment that she came out in this beautiful embellished Francis Lee Biran gown, I thought Celeste already had some competition. Ang lakas ng dating ni Michelle dito with her sleek hair and powerful poses. She just looked incredibly sexy here. And you notice how she was taking her sweet sweet time to bait in the moment as the crowd cheered for her while she was walking. And then as she was feeling the energy of the crowd, she did a back pose in ganon on one leg, which truly made me jump out of my seat and say, Power! Binakla ni moms with classness! Ang gown niya with Francis Libiran here, so I love it. Now we go to Julia Sobie's gown from Albay. Oh gosh, grabe yung gown ni Julia. One of my most favorites here in this competition. The moment Julia came out in this gown, Leia Almodal gown, I was really stunned. This ultra see-through silver gown made her look like a mermaid warrior with her straight hairstyle here as she glided on stage. Para siyang for me, si Ariel from The Little Mermaid in this styling na nagtatago sa bato na ganun yung styling which is a true representation of her empowered personality here in MUP and it was just so incredibly sexy as well her moves were very refined and subdued and you can feel that there was no misstep that would really happen as she finally as she fight as she you know make how we her hair or parted her hair on one side to elevate her performance further so I truly love Julia's performance here and now we go to Vanessa's Kairos gown from Iloilo province. You know what guys, out of all the red gowns in the evening gown, I like Vanessa Caros the most. It's a red halter gown with a deep cut and I thought the color and gown design all the more showcase her sexiness on stage. I also love the high pony as I feel it really elevated the look. And now we go to Genesis Latugat's gown from Baguio City. Genesis wore a yellow version of her prelims mermaid gown in the finals which I feel kind of lost the wow factor for me. No doubt the gown looks so beautiful on her with her hair styling but how I wish she could have worn a gown that would have made her look current or any gown that could have shown her curves better. Now imagine her diba, wearing Julia's dress or even Palawan's dress. Nagigets nyo, it could have been a more powerful performance from Genesis. And now let's go to Lou Dominic Pixon's gown from Cebu province. Another gown that I really consider my favorite in this 
competition. I just love this Louis Pangilinan gown on her with its intricate design on the bodice area with it the, with the beads, sequins, crystals, and side slit with warm with with one arm tool trail that made her all the more look so royal and elegant on stage. Plus the Chignon band she sported here truly complemented the look. Now, siguro ang issue ko lang sa kanya is not of her own doing. Um, bag, uh, Genesis and Cebu province were right next to each other. So the moment that Lou came out also in her yellow gown, para nawala ng yung wow factor ko ng slight lang because the girl, the girl before her, Genesis from Baguio, was also wearing a yellow gown. And now let's go to Pauline Amelink's gown from Bohol. This Mikey Andre gown was also a standout on Pauline, just like her prelims gown. This figure hugging gown made Pauline so sexy and fierce on stage. While I do love the gown, I feel her makeup here was dark, which kind of weighed down her overall look here. I feel since she was wearing a dark red gown, she could have opted for a lighter makeup to retain her freshness on stage. And now, let's go to my ultimate favorite, which is Celeste Cortesi from Pasay. Just one word to describe her performance here, ethereal. That's how I am really describing Celeste in this round. It really felt like she was already competing for Miss Universe with that beautiful face and Valta Gubasi inspired gown. While this fringe gown may have, may have been something that we have seen before, what totally elevated the look here is her overall packaging. It was well thought out. That French twist hairstyle really complemented the look that she that Celeste was aiming for here. It was very refined and classy. Celeste really need not to show more skin to make her look so, to, to make her look sexy as that face can really do the talking all the time. Well done, Celeste. And now let's go to Dorothy Hemilan's gown from Ilo Ilo City. Am I the only one who feels Dorothy also held her own against the other favorites here in this round? Especially if she has the misfortune of always coming after Celeste, coming out after Celeste, this silver gold gown truly made her a standout as well. Ang ganda ng pagkagawa ni Sir Carlos Simoy with this intricate vertical lining design which made Dorothy so slim and sexy on stage. And now let's go to Gillian de Mesa's gown from Nueva Vizcaya. What a pop of color when she opened the show. That red velvet gown looks so good on her. Although I wish she could have sported a sleek hairstyle to complement her sexy look. But honestly guys, the wow factor was gone for me <laughs> in her performance here as we had seen Chantal wear this black version during prelims night a few nights ago. And now we go to Annabelle McDonald's gown from Misamis Oriental. I am so glad that Annabelle wore a much better gown here compared to her prelims performance. And orange at that. Orange is another color that is so hard to pull off and I love how she pulled it off well. So, tapos ang naglaradil pa Sa, sa, fr sa freshness at sa pagka beautifully styled yung packaging ni, ni Annabelle dito kaya I totally get her performance here well done now let's go to Jiwa Palakat's gown from Ilocos Sur I honestly don't know guys what she was thinking here with this gown it was so busy with many details that I don't know what to make out of it already and the way she raised her Hands to showcase herself leaves nothing to be desired, Tadaga, guys. Peace, Jewel. I don't know what she was really thinking here. That kind of performance, Talaga, would have been better suited for another pageant, but not in Miss Universe. And now, let's talk about Jonah Sweet in this segment of the competition. I just love, love, love Jonah Sweet's dress here. I love how she totally embraced her curvaceous body with this figure-hugging red vertical gown. Para siyang si Ashley, si Ashley Graham here with that moment there that she had. What I also love about her styling here was her styling from the neck up. Ang ganda ng pagka-makeup sa kanya. And the way... Her sleek hairstyle was complementing her red dress. I thought, wow, that was so beautifully executed. And now, we go to Miss Laguna's gown, Sonia Tanyag. I just love this gold 
Chico Estiva gown on sa Sonia Tayag's gown. This intricate embroidered gown ornamented with patterns look just good on her talaga. I just love everything about this gown. Although it's something that we have seen before, right? 